Hey, Adam. Yeah. Sorry to disturb your practicing. What are you playing there? I don't know. Some secondary dominance. Mm. Is that like playing second fiddle? It is on this podcast. Oof. I'm Adam Manis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear Podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Coming at you. Today, we are brought to you by our sponsor. Yes. Any tune. Any tune. Now, is that, does you get like any tune ever? Yeah. Any like a tune, big real book? Any tune has sponsored us. Every song ever written. <laughs> <laughs> no, any tune is an app. It's an app for your iPhone, for your Mac, uh, for your Android device, mm. and um you know, we don't throw around the... Well, actually, we do throw around the word game changer a lot around here. We do. But on good stuff. I mean, some of the things we talk about game changing, like learning solos, listen, we rank this up there. That's why we are confident in saying that any tune will be a game changer for serious musicians in your practice routine. That's right. Yeah, it's got a, a bunch of amazing, great features. So not only can you uh, slow a track down uh, without losing the pitch, you not only can you loop, but you can set things like... Uh, like markers throughout the track so that you can yeah. easily go back. So this is like a game changer for when you're like <laughs> want to loop a section over yeah. and over again, or maybe you want to you want to go through a couple different sections and like oh, I wish I could start from the bridge again. You can do that. Yeah. You can also do these these loops where uh, you start at half speed. It loops it like nine or ten times, and each time it gets a little bit faster. So great for for uh, picking up things at tempo. Um, and then there's the game changing feature of being able to isolate. Or subtract an instrument from a track. So, like, if you're listening to, like, you know, Miles Davis, uh, you know, at the plug nickel or whatever, you can take out the drums and you can just hear the things without drums, or you can just highlight the piano. It's pretty amazing. It is amazing, and the reason is for serious musicians that you know it's a serious tool for serious musicians that want to improve, is because you know, as a listener, you don't need all that. You just want to listen to the track. Right. But as practitioners of this music, we want to study and uh, you know, number one, listen, but then mm -hmm. apply that. So this is really. Um, you, you know, we're not big preachers of shortcuts, but this does kind of give you a little bit of a shortcut. You still need to do the work and hear it, but it, it makes that the ability, especially for transcribing yeah, um, and getting sure. into a routine by putting up the markers and just working on one section over and over again. It takes a lot of the, the drudgery and legwork of like, you know, jumping back and forth. It takes that out. Yeah. Remember what we say about transcribing. You don't have to transcribe the whole solo every time you go to transcribe. That's you can right. just transcribe chunks at a time. Right. That's right. And so go to anytune.us slash you'll hear it. One word there. And you can see the special landing page and offers from them with our partnership that um, as several of our professional transcribers at Open Studio, we were surprised didn't know about Anytune and are now using it just from hearing it on the podcast we've, from us. We've had a lot of feedback about Anytune on YouTube, from emails. A yep. lot of people are digging it. That's right. For sure. Good. All right. So today I got an email this morning. From a, I don't think he's even a you'll hear it listener, but an open studio customer. He was a bill collector. You got that wrong. <laughs> I get those emails every day. <laughs> but uh, no, asking about how to deal with a series of consecutive secondary dominants. Yes. It's not something we've touched on very much here. So I'm talking about things like the tune All of Me or... Uh, all of me, <laughs> just take all of me. That tune? Yeah. Okay. Or uh, or the bridge, the most famously the bridge to... <laughs> it's putting the gain down on my mic, I see. <laughs> Sorry, did I spark some uh, excitement over in the engineering department? The bridge on rhythm. Thank you very much. Uh, Sorry, I don't even know what that is. No, keep going. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so a tune like All of Me... I love a parade. Sorry, I, that just popped in my head. See, there you go. <laughs> You done? Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, a tune like All all of Me? Yeah. Or like the bridge for rhythm changes. Something where there's a bunch of dominant chords that seemingly Whoa. don't go together. So right. I had the, I had Ooh, the you're modulating, ping bro. pong tremolo on. Nice. Um, or like, you know. You know, these are all going around in, in the circle of fourths, right? Yeah. So back to the one. Okay. What do you, this person want to know, what the heck do I play? What do I practice on something like this? Um, Wait, did they want to know what the heck or did they want to know what the hell? They want to know what the hell. Because I did notice you titled it that. Yeah, I got a little controversial. Sorry. Yeah. I don't sorry, know. if you have a problem with the word hell. 
Well, we're going to see who wins. Because I was saying maybe more what the heck. But you guys look at the title because we don't know what the final title is going to be. Often, we'll see who won. <laughs> how many times do you say heck in a day? Um, as Versus many times hell. as I say, gee, golly, willikers. That's what I'm saying. Why yeah. would we go All right, heck? fine. What the hell? What the hell? So it's what the hell do I play over a second domi- secondary dominant? Hey, listen, we're talking about playing the bridge to some rhythm changes. If you're not a grown-up enough to, to use the word hell. It's an it's adult show. Yeah, that's right. Hide your wives and cover your kids' ears. No, but so check this out. I was going to, you just answered the first question that I had. Uh, and this is going to be part of a series, I understand, right? The What the Hell series? Oh, yeah, we're doing this all week. What the hell? Yeah, it's a slow spiral down into uh, <laughs> into the into, into, Hades. Uh, into Hades. But um, my question was going to be, what the hell is a secondary dominant? Maybe we should answer that first. Well, that's a great idea, actually, to define what a secondary dominant is. So a secondary dominant is not in the tonic key of whatever tune you're in. So a primary dominant in the key of, say, B flat is F, right? Yep. Um the secondary dominant would be, say, in the key of B flat, a C7. It's kind of a side hustle dominant. It's a put side it in the words hustle. that young folks would understand. Um, and it's really just any dominant that could be part of, you know, that's a really progression. a progression that's yep. not in the uh, in the tonic key, right? right? So that's why this bridge for rhythm changes in B flat. Starts on a D7, goes to G7. These are all secondary dominants. If we were just diatonic, the D would be D minor, the G would be G minor, and the C would be C minor. And correct me if I'm wrong, but often we wouldn't even know or the listener wouldn't hear that it's secondary. Like, so play the first, the three chord at the beginning of the bridge there, and now resolve that to where it would be expected to go. Right. So if it did that, it's actually not. It's like almost like a deceptive second because it resolves where it expects to go. That's to right. a minor or a major. Right, right. So, yeah, could have done so, that too. Yeah. And then, then it's like a key change, kind of. Right. But if it goes to here, that's what makes it secondary. And then that, because these are all wanting to go somewhere, right? Maybe even tertiary, what do we call that? Because you've got tertiary? Tertiary. Well, that too. And you see this with the cycle of, of fourth, circle of fourth, often because, you know, like the D is the, is the five of G, the G is the five of C, the yeah. C is the five of S. So, really, you're just putting like, Five, 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 five. So we're we're all heading towards B flat. Yeah, you're delaying the inevitable. You could do this. You could keep going with this and forever. I mean, it just could keep going, going, going. We don't have time. We don't have time for that. But we okay. could. But so, but because of this sort of nebulous movement, right? And because there's no center to these, really. I think it is confusing for beginners and intermediate players. Like, what do I do to make it sound good? What are the the greats playing over this kind of right. stuff? Um, and so, like, the, the easy answer is probably what you would expect. It is just things like the Mixolydian or the Lydian dominant. Yeah. Or even, you know, the uh, uh, the diminished scale or the altered scale. It's really all the choices you have sure. on a regular dominant chord, but I think how you handle it is what makes it a little bit different. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think that the, if you just stop at, oh, you can treat it just like any other five chord, yeah, that's in terms of the, the note choices, the vocabulary that you have available. But if you kind of look a little bit bigger picture and understand the function and look at it as a longer harmonic sequence and an opportunity, we're always thinking about, we should always be thinking about or at least hearing, telling a story with what we're playing. That's right. Because we're talking about improvising now, That's right? right, yeah, yeah. So, you know, what is it about the, the progression um, or lack of progression to a sequence uh, of chords that... Like, what does that do to our ability to tell a story with primarily melody? You know, always melody, harmony, and rhythm, but we're talking about the melodies we put together. Mm-hmm. And so when you've got, for instance, on that bridge, you've got the four in a row, the way you would play over the final one where you know a resolution is coming is, yeah, is going to be different. And and so it's almost like you look, that, that you look at that secondary dominant, or in this case, the several secondary dominants, as a setup... Um, you know, a, a chance to still be unresolved. You know it's not going to be resolved harmonically because anytime you're on a five chord, unless you're really giving it like a, a bluesy one type, one chord type of feel, mm-hmm. um, it's not going to be stationary. It's already got some momentum. Now, can you make a dominance chord feel like it's stationary? Yes, of course. The blues yeah. is a perfect example. Yeah. But the idea of like how these are set up when they are secondary, it's going to have that forward momentum harmonically. Yeah. So... 
the easy answer w- or, or the simple, simplistic way to look at it is like, oh, okay, so then we're going to play kind of in a rambling way along the chords. Well, maybe hold on, hold your horses there, buddy. G goller baller, what, what, what the heck are you doing there, buddy? Oh, uh, sorry, I was kind of old timey. No, but you know what's fun sometimes is to play against what that harmony is with your melody. Sure. The, the main thing is you, you're aware of it. So like you're able to hear, and I know it's a little bit esoteric, but you're able to hear kind of what that general harmonic structure is and that there's not a stability. There's a constant kind of wanting, you know, there's a transition and there's a wanting to resolve, but you know, you're not there yet. So you can use that to your advantage if you understand that and can That's hear right. it with how you craft your melodies. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the the first way that I think about doing that is, is to understand, especially when it's going around in these fourths, like on the bridge to, to rhythm changes, right? Yeah. Is you can establish this as like a... Uh, as a one. The blues there. I like that. As a one chord. But then before you go to the next chord, you can turn this into more of a dominant seven sound. So you kind of went blues. Let me just do a little play by play. A little blues scale, and then you went half whole. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Diminished. Or you could go altered. Which heightens the kind of transitional quality of the dominant chord. Right. So even in that sense, too, I would say like the, your first step in, in treating this circle of force like this is you could even think about the first measure as like an A minor 7 over D. Mm, a little sus action. And then do some kind of five thing to the G. And you can think about this, too, as like a... Like, they can all be both tonics and dominants yeah. within this sequence. You know, it really depends. Or if you're Oscar Peterson, you can... They almost all have a blues tonic feel to it, right? Well, that wasn't that, yeah. And that's actually very connected with your first example there right before that with the Oscar Peterson thing because you were using the blues usually as the thing that established it as a tonic. Yeah, that we're in a one zone. Yeah, right? and that, that's, I mean, for the listener, that's the main thing that makes a dominant chord. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think if there's other times. I'm sure there's other times. But it's a primary way to kind of connect with, like, we're here for now. Like the blues right. pulls it to makes it the one, whereas most like kind of more bebop playing or like you were doing the sus and did those different things, they have that kind of transitional thing or floating along, which is great. Too. Yeah, you can. That's the cool thing about it is you can do either or. Yeah. But you have to be, you have to be purposeful when you do this. You yes. have to be very intentful. Yeah. And then as you're practicing it, and it, that, that and by purposeful and intentful, we don't mean you have to do it the same way every time. No. Quite the opposite. But you have to understand. And it doesn't mean you have to plan it out either. I think a lot of people get confused with that. Like, wow, okay, if I'm being more purposeful, I'm going to have more, contri- you know, be more contrived in my improvising. But it's not at all because it's very purposeful as you go. Right. So, like, you understand, like, what these different options are. And then there's, you know, other things that go on up chromatically and different things. But you understand what the possibilities of those are, not just theoretical. That's because right. Because theoretical, the audience doesn't care about that. That's right. But you understand what it sounds like. Like, what does it do to the tension of the moment so that like as you're telling your story you almost like start to instinctively go to the tool that maybe will add tension i mean just like a great filmmaker when it gets to a suspenseful part of the movie they want the music to sound a certain way they want the color to look a certain way they want the editing to be along with the story but the story drives that Mm -hmm. and what's cool is sometimes the color is the opposite because the director has a vision of like we're going to juxtapose this against that Mm-hmm. You know, and we can do that with the dominant. The dominant chord is very flexible, and for so sure. the secondary is just even dopio. We, we're dopioing it up for you right there. You can also turn this into like a longer stretch of of tonic in one. So I'm thinking of this thing where you do a Lydian dominant right on yeah. this D seven. For the G, you turn that into altered. Mm-hmm. I've heard you do this before. Probably don't even know it. Then for the C, back to the yeah. Lydian dominant, right. and then for the F. Back to the altered. Yep. So what you're doing actually is doing the same. Yeah, you know, it, it goes chromatic yeah, yeah, down yeah. and yeah. fourth up. Well, and there I think you're able to you're taking it like you're setting up a pattern, or or you're actually you're playing off the pattern that's already there because like we said at the beginning, circle of fourth, cycle of fourths. Right. Which one is it? I don't know. I don't know cycle of fifth, circle of fourths. I right, think. Right. Circle of life. Circle. Circle. It's of the fifth? circle. It's a circle of fifth, cycle of fourths. Someone seen that movie, comment. Adam? 
The Lion King? Yeah. I watched it uh, on the plane back from Japan just recently. Nice. The new one. Who, do you know who the... Oh, the new one. Yeah, that's nice. You know one. who sang the original Circle of Life? Elton John. That's right. Um, okay, so, but I digress. <laughs> you know, Elton John, he, know, he knows a little something about the secondary dominant. Does he know anything about the altered like, scale? Uh, though? Daniel, I doubt it. what's that? My brother, Daniel. There's some, all, there's some secondary dominance in that. He does. I don't think he knows the altered scale, though. He's not a, he has hits. Nothing, nothing, nothing that'll keep you away from a hit like an altered scale. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> that'll knock you off the, the billboard charts faster. Than <laughs> than a, uh, or a Lydian dominant. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. actually, yeah. Cool. Well, that you know what? I'm excited about I was a little, tre- I had a little trepidation, trepidatious going into the What the Hell series. Now I'm fully embracing our, our slow descent into Hades now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's right. going to only get better. That's right. What the hell do I play over a secondary dominant? We hope that we uh, gave you a little ear food today and illuminated your um, you know, quest for knowledge on the secondary dominant. That's right. They can either be the tonic or the dominant, but it's up to you to decide and have some purpose with that. That's right. So um, we are sponsored by Anytune, which we talked about. We're also sponsored by OpenStudioJazz.com, our friends right next door, or really right on the other side of the pod cave. Literally. Um, you know, we had we had we had a lot of fun over the Black Friday sales. What we really have now happening because it's holiday season for a lot of people, different faiths and stuff, parts of the world. But we have a new robust gifting system. I don't know if I'm, I'm not suggesting you have to get me a gift from Open Studio. You can do it from wherever. But I'm putting it out there. You might have some other friends you want to get a gift from Open Studio, and you can do that. You know how mad you would be if I got you a gift from <laughs> Open Studio. <laughs> not if it's that Jeff Keezer course. Uh, that's true. The new Jeff Keezer course. Oh, I'd be all over that. That's true. Um, I'm, I am all over that. So. The cool thing is, too, like you can go get the gift sort of. And if you're not sure about what course, just choose whatever you think is best. They can they can exchange it. It's no problem. You know, it's, we're very flexible with that. But what you can do is with our gifting system is get the gift. And then you give us the name and the email address of the person you want to give it. And you can tell us on the form there what date you want it delivered. Mm, you know, that's really nice. And, and what's great, we're not going to take the credit. You're going to take the credit. You're going to get all we're gonna give you the, credit. the gift credit. We're going to take your credit card number, but you're going to get you're, you're going to get the credit for that beautiful gift. And whoever gets the gift is going to get some quality jazz lessons. Yeah, and, it, and this is something that I mean, on our lifetime courses or the membership. I mean, lifetime courses they can look at this forever, all year, for sure. You know, for as long as they want. So it's a fun one. It's yeah, not going to yeah. be like the, that 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 uh, candy cane you're going to give me. They're going to eat in one setting. Ryan, what do you want for Christmas, man? Ryan wants a weighted keyboard. <laughs> Wait, that's the same thing we want. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Can you get this one for the podcast too while you're at it? Oh, well, till tomorrow. You'll hear it. <laughs>